solvers and savvy consumers of information. We propose to do this through an emphasis on communication, critical thinking, creativity, self-management, perseverance, and collaboration. Students will be active partners in authentic learning, offering voice and choice and demonstrating competency. Okay, so we will uh, we'll have about 15 minutes or so of citizens' comments. Um, try to keep your comments under three minutes just so we have enough time for whoever wants to speak to get up there. Uh, and when you come to the mic, just please state your name and address for the record. So whoever has comments, feel free to step up. I'm Karen Oliva, 10 Putnam Road. Could you spell your last name? I'm sorry. A-L-L-E-V-A. -L -L -E Thank you. You guys should know that last name by now, I'm sure. <laughs> okay, first, I want to know when we reached the 80% vaccination rate at the high school. What was that date? And why didn't you tell our students? Because from what I remember, you said 80% vaccination rate in a school meant no more masks. I don't have the data from Brian. Um, Where is Brian? Brian is out dealing with family matters tonight. Okay. He'll be back in the office tomorrow. Okay, so none of you know. So Were you updated no. along the way? We've been updated with vaccination numbers at all of our meetings. Um, okay. We did so not. So, eighty percent was what we were told back in August, I believe it was. Mm -hmm. So, what I understand, it's at eighty-five percent right now. Therefore, it seems like you guys were dangling a carrot in front of the kids and all of us parents, saying once we reached eighty-five, eighty percent, wouldn't have to wear masks anymore. So, kids who didn't want to get vaccinated in the first place did it purely for the fact that they wanted to see their friends' faces, be able to breathe during athletics. And my thoughts are that you got paid for every kid that got a vaccination booster or whatever that that is pure incentive for you not to tell us you said we got paid for every kid yep that's, that's, that's my belief okay you you took money from the cares act i'd like to know where all that money went love to see the financials on that if it went to the teachers union or if it went to our kids health protection anyway so there that is I see this as child abuse okay you guys had our kids wearing these filthy masks beyond the point of 80% vax rate first of all you should have said no to it last year you should be ashamed of yourselves for not sticking up for our kids and their health you robbed them of their carefree most wonderful years of their lives not being able to see other ex facial expressions, okay? They turn into bullies. This one girl posted something on social media, said she was going to poke out people's eyes with a fork, kids, other kids who didn't get vaccinated. The nurse, school nurse was a bully. She told everyone in the room that my daughter wasn't vaccinated. Put her, and, and her friends, several of her friends too, the principal knows about this. I went in, tried to get him to do something about it. He said he'd reprimand her. She's still working there. Put my daughter in an awful situation. Lots of other kids, too. This one girl who posted, you guys scared her to death. She felt like she had to bully other kids. She turned into an abuser. Okay, all these kids are now psychologically, physically damaged. They're not going to be able to recover from this for years, if even that. We're going to hold you all responsible for it. Karen, you're a little over three minutes. We need to wrap okay, up. Okay, I will sum it up. So I believe all of you should apologize to all the parents and the students. Explain why you did not unmask them at 80% and when it was. I'd like to follow up on that. And I think you should all resign for not sticking up for our kids. We're all here sticking up for our kids, their health. Masks didn't do anything. And we told you last August kids weren't dying of COVID. You didn't believe it. You didn't do the research. It's clearly the truth now thank you for your comments Very cool you. Comment. Uh, just so all you guys know for uh, pro process reasons um, this is a citizen citizen comment time frame so we're not really answering questions necessarily just to clarify the state has had in place since the beginning of the school year a rule requiring masks in schools the state so the governor mandated that and that's been renewed over and over and over again initially he said that when schools reached 80 percent 
vaccination within a school, they'd be able to apply for, and if they wanted it, get granted the ability to be without masks. But that, that has been superseded by the governor's requirement that everyone wear masks until February 28th. On February 28th, the governor has allowed us to make a decision as to whether we want to continue masks or not. So we have not had a choice in this matter, and we would have been supportive, I think, of what, we, what we've done, which is masking. Masking has some safety that is necessary in a time of a pandemic, and I'm sorry you guys don't agree with that, but that's, that's your, your choice to disagree. We've implemented what the state requires, and we had no choice. The 80% rule was a, a rule that was put out but was never allowed to be executed on until now. And so we just found out we were 82% th just this past week. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, it was 85%. I understand the 85% you got, but we just found out this week that we got 82%, and then they updated and got us to 85% and then 86%. Those are the numbers we got. But the only time I got numbers from the town, from, from our superintendent, that were over 80%, were just this past week. So th those numbers are new-ish numbers that are up there. Like a whole flood of people went and got the vaccination in that last month? No, they, they reported it. We okay, don't know what people have. Said it, it was left up to the superintendents right. and the principals whether or not to drop the masks. It's clearly on their website. No, it's, it's yeah. Okay, so, let's, so, let's so move just, on. Just, you know, so yeah. uh, it is citizen comments, so you guys can comment, but we may not engage. Mm -hmm. Okay, we don't have we'd like follow-up. <clears throat> Oh, sorry. Hello, Kimberly Hello. Mavroides, 9 Poplar Street. I just want to say that, yes, I think a lot of families and parents are probably ready to be done with masks. But I have to say that when I hear people describing your guys' actions as abusing children, I would like to remind everyone that there are children that attend our schools that actually are abused that come from abusive households. There are women and men who grew up in abusive households and experienced actual physical child abuse. And to equate needing to wear a mask for our own protection and the protection of others is not abuse. And we should not be using that kind of language when we're discussing something that has to be implemented to protect a wide variety of people. The policy is not just for your everyday average person. It's to assist children, teachers, who may have conditions that needed further protection. That said, whatever is decided tonight, I'm sure families will support, whether that's getting rid of the policy or maintaining it. But I really would like to hear our community use language that more accurately describes what this situation is and it is not child abuse. Thank you, Kimberly. Anyone else like to speak? Hi, Amanda Orlando, 7 Old Essex Road. Um, I'm here in response to Governor Baker lifting the state mask mandate in the coming weeks. As a mother watching my son go through kindergarten and most of first grade in a mask, I am asking you to follow his guidelines and drop the mandate in Ipswich. Our children have been put through enough these past couple of years and it's time for them to have their childhood back as they should have many months ago. To quote Governor Baker's speech last week, there is a consequence at this point for keeping kids in masks and, I, and we think we should move beyond that. Masks no longer, no longer serve any purpose other than inhibiting learning and normal childhood development. If other parents choose to continue masking their children, that is their prerogative and that decision should be respected. Vaccines are available to everyone who wants them. Throughout the entire pandemic, Ipswich Public Schools has followed the DESI, DESI guidelines. Why would this decision be any different? Issues surrounding our children should always be the choice of their parents. I was here in September to speak on this topic. And I will continue to show my face here until my son's teachers and friends can he see his when he is in school. Thank you. Thank you Hi, I'm Jody Stevens and I live at 34 Washington Street. Sorry, I'm just trying to pull up my notes with my... All right. 
Um, I'm a nurse practitioner as well as a mother and I'm deeply concerned about masking children. We are tampering with healthy development by masking children for multiple hours a day. Neurons in our brain fire off when a human sees an expression on another individual. For example, a smile, stress, sadness, fear. In turn, we mirror that expression and develop empathetic feelings. These mirror neurons have been held as a cornerstone of human empathy and language. By masking children at such a pivotal moment in emotional and social growth, we are impairing the development of empathy. Seeing, fear, seeing faces of peers and teachers is imperative to language development, reading, and social cues. Anxiety and depression due to isolation and disconnection is at an all-time high. These fears have been perpetuated by COVID. Unnecessary mandates and restrictions has led to even greater repercussions than COVID. In fact, the New York Times has reported that children have a greater risk from riding in cars than, than from COVID. We are no longer in a pandemic and are moving into an endemic. It is time to transition to living with COVID. It is time, I'm sorry, I ask that you listen to our children's needs and drop mass mandates. It should be left up to the individual family to decide what is best for them and not the place of the school board. I do not consent to my daughter wearing a medical device all day, every day, and this is not a new norm. My daughter is a junior in high school and has yet to have a so-called normal school year. In fact, these school years have been filled with sudden shutdowns, remote learning, hybrid learning, filled with social isolation, told to stay away from others, to pull up her mask, told to be afraid of germs, feared you will kill others. There's been social media posts by kids in the Ipswich High School threatening those that are not vaccinated. There's bullying, there's anger on social media. When is enough enough? When are the children, why are the children the last to be freed of these unnecessary mandates? Vote to drop mask mandates and leave it up to individual families' discretion. Lastly, I wanna say that because of these unnecessary mandates, my daughter, one day, about a couple weeks ago, had to sit and eat her lunch in the bathroom because there was no place for her to sit in the cafeteria because they're so spread out. That's, to me, more concerning than the concerns with masks and COVID spread. It is time to drop these mandates and let kids be kids. Thank you. Thank you. Would anyone else like to speak? Hi, my name is Beth Cook. I live at 23 Arrowhead Trail. I am a new resident of Ipswich as of last year. Um, I am a parent of two, ages eight and 11. Um, we moved to Ipswich in part because of the excellent school system, but we have not yet been able to utilize Ipswich schools because I do not consent to my eight and 11 year old wearing a medical device in school. I left my job and my income to homeschool them this year and um, that is not a choice that I wanted to make. I support public education. My husband is a high school teacher in Gloucester. He's been there for 18 years um, and I don't know if you're aware of how many parents have taken their children out of school, out of preschool, out of daycare, because we see the harm that masks are causing to our children and we have no other option in this state. I will not knowingly harm my children. And I realize that many of you think it's totally ridiculous. Why not just wear a mask? What's the big deal with a mask? It is a big deal. Um, in a recent roundtable discussion on Face the Nation, CBS News correspondent Jan Crawford said, children who have almost no risk of dying from COVID have sacrificed and suffered the most from restrictive COVID measures. The US Surgeon General issued a 53-page advisory on December 17th, highlighting the need to address the youth mental health crisis. Mental health problems in children have increased dramatically as a direct result of the measures that we have taken to mitigate COVID transmission. Early estimates in 2020 showed a 57% jump over the previous decade in youth suicide deaths. I know suicide, my father died of suicide five years ago. Moreover, suicide attempts by girls ages 12 to 17 has increased 51% and black children are twice as likely to die by suicide than white children. 
40% of children ages 10 to 24 expressed feelings of sadness and hopelessness. That's 40% of American children. This is the Surgeon General stating this. Jan Crawford stated school closures, lockdowns, cancellation of sports. You couldn't even go on a playground in the DC area without cops scurrying, shooing the kids off. And it had a tremendous negative effect on kids and it's been an afterthought. Children are at an extremely low risk from COVID, and that is a good thing. A healthy teenager has a one in a million chance from catching and dying from COVID. Statistically, they have a greater chance of dying in a car accident. Our children's health and well being must be our first priority, and this includes physical health and mental health. There is a lot of disagreement among experts on how best to do that. You talk about following the science, but where is the science showing that mandated mask wearing by children, children, children who stick their hands in their nose and in their pants, mitigates COVID transmission and does so without posing a threat to them. I'm talking about children being made to cover their nose and mouth with at least two layers of fabric for eight hours a day. A mask is a medical device. Prior to the pandemic, people who wore face masks for any length of time were trained, fitted, and tested to ensure that this medical device was both safe and effective for the wearer. Those who wore masks in the workplace replaced their mask after each use multiple times a day. They disposed of those masks properly and washed their hands after touching the soiled mask. So we're children are not wearing masks in this way. I will wrap it up. I'd argue that children are not able to wear masks correctly and they cause more harm than they do good. We cannot pretend that masking, distancing, and other mitigation efforts are normal. We cannot pretend that it's just a mask <clears throat> because it isn't. Normal education is face-to-face -face and person-to-person. -person. Children learn by reading facial cues, developing close personal relationships with their peers and mentors, yet we are conditioning children to fear their peers and community members for a virus that they have a one in a million chance of dying from. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So Becky, I know you wanted to speak and this will be this will sure. be the last. All right. Thanks, Greg. How's everyone doing? It's nice Great. to see you all. Thanks for conducting this meeting tonight. It's appreciated. Um, so over the last uh, week or so since we heard um, that the mask mandate was going to be dropped from the state level. Um, the teachers have been holding meetings and having an opportunity for people to come together and um, talk about how they feel about letting go of the masks. And the overall consensus, I think, is that just as we've had here tonight, there really is no consensus. There are people who really feel we should be leaving masks on uh, for the rest of the year. There are people who feel we should have never really had a mask mandate to begin with. Um, there are a lot of people uh, somewhere in the middle. Um, I think most teachers are ready to consider letting go of the masks. A lot of what's been said tonight by parents, I think teachers acknowledge and understand too. You know, we, we're wearing the masks all day. We see the kids and even the mask breaks, it is hard. Um, and we can't wear them forever. So we all hear that, we share a lot of those thoughts. I think though that what I've heard from teachers is a request for us to all consider maybe a little bit of a, a middle ground, a sensibly gradual approach to letting go of the masks. You know, it's been suggested that it has to be the 28th. Well, every time we come back from a break, we see a significant rise in numbers. As teachers, we know that as difficult as the masks are, they're nowhere near as difficult as going remote. And when you get enough people who are testing positive, you look at that possibility again. And that is what is most harmful for kids. So what about if we maybe picked a different date? Why does it have to be the 28th? Couldn't we give it another week or two? Let us get past that hump that we usually see in positive cases. People go skiing, people travel, people visit family as they should. People should be enjoying all of those things. But let us all come back, give it a week or two so we get past, people can be tested, we kind of get past that sort of danger point, and then take the masks off. It was also suggested by at least one person that there's something rather 
<coughs> appropriately full circle in taking the masks off at March 13th because that's of course when we all went out so anyway um, you know that's I think where the teachers stand that you know we're we're ready to support um, letting go of the masks but a sensibly gradual approach uh, would be better for all I think there's a, a lot of people who are erring on the side of let's keep the masks not because they think we should keep them for the rest of the year but just because the timing right after a vacation doesn't feel sensible to us um, not with the data not with the way things have always gone <clears throat> I think the one other piece is the importance of recognizing that we could get another variant of COVID the situation has always been evolving and changing so to have a clear metric in place that would be a data point to say you know we need to put the masks back on for a period of time because the case numbers have started to go up to have something set that we're kind of agreed on so that we are proactive in such a case rather than reactive I think would also bring a lot of people more into the comfort zone with letting go of the masks. So I think our request is for just a sensibly gradual approach with some sensible metrics in place for a backup plan should we need to go back to it and maybe just a slightly later date for, for taking them off. Thanks so much. Thanks Becky. Thank Thanks, Becky. Okay, so that'll end our citizens comments <coughs> section. Um, now we'll open up the topic for discussion amongst the committee. Um, I'll start off you know I can certainly appreciate both sides of this argument I can appreciate the parents that are here tonight I can appreciate um, you know what Becky just said but I would fully support going back unmasked on the 28th um, I feel like the data that we've seen supports it the numbers are down um, we surveyed our staff almost two-thirds of the staff agreed that going back on the 28th made sense without masks um, we've talked to our town health director um, school nurses they agree that the 28th is, is a good day to go back and I think you know we would certainly make it mask optional for the kids and for the staff no one's ever going to tell the kids that they can't wear a mask and I do agree with Becky that you know we will have to craft a policy that says if in the event that we do see a spike of some sort what are the metrics that we need to see in order to revert back um, if, if that that situation arose um, again I think you know based on the the data that we've seen the likelihood of that happening is pretty low um, so again I would support uh, rescinding our mask policy and going back with masks masks optional on February 28th Anyone else care to yeah share? I would agree with um, rescinding the policy on the 28th going back without masks if people want to wear them they can wear them um, I where we've been following state mandates I don't know that I would support <coughs> us putting in place a policy with sort of introducing our own set of metrics I think there's people who make those calls and that's served us pretty well throughout mm -hmm. this so I think that's where my head would be on revert to Desi it. guidance then yeah yeah but tonight um, I no, that makes I, sense I mean we can yeah, sort that out I yeah. support you know um, repealing the mandate or the policy Chubb I support that as well um, and uh, also support updating tonight with the vote the uh, updated policy that uh, I support uh, I support uh, lifting the uh, mandate on the 28th as well but I also support tonight that we vote uh, the updated policy and which importantly stresses that people who want to wear the mask can wear the mask uh, students and staff returning from a five-day quarantine following a positive COVID test must follow strict mask use other than when eating, drinking, or outside and conduct active monitoring for symptoms through a 10 day, of, through day 10 of exposure. Also, uh, masks be worn in the student health, school health offices and by federal, law, by federal mandate, uh, public health order. All students and staff 
will be required to wear masks on all school buses. I similarly agree with, um, <coughs> I support rescinding our, our mask policy on the 28th. Um, I feel like we have enough data. Um, you know, as Jeff said, we've talked to school nurses, we've talked to the director of public health, um, and the Department of at, um, Elementary and Secondary Education makes their decisions in conjunction with the Mass Department of Public Health. So I feel like you know there's there's enough data and this survey of the staff as well. Um, and also I think it's important that we have this testing program that's now in place where staff can test. Um, you know, staff that opted into the program can test weekly on Thursday nights and students as well that have opted into the program can test weekly on Thursday nights. So we do have a good sense of the numbers. Um, I, I see Becky's point of the post vacation um, surges that we've seen in the past, but I do feel like we're at a different place than we were, um, you know, certainly after um, just December break, um, you know, that was where Omicron was, um, was really, hot and heavy and now I think we're in a different place and I'm, I'm hoping we don't see that post surge but I do think we'll get a good sense of it from the testing programs that we have in place. Um, so yeah, I support uh, rescinding the policy on the 28th. Jeff? I'd like to go before the medical professionals. Um, <laughs> so I also uh, support rescinding and changing the policy. You know, I, I think that it's, um, it should not go again without saying just how amazing teachers and students and uh, administrators and nursing have been during this. It has been extremely difficult. I agree that given the data that we have, it's clear that we've crested and come way down as far as Omicron and that the conditions have changed. Um, so I do support it. Um, I would like a point of clarification that it does include the preschool, most of which those children have not had a chance to be vaccinated. Is that true? Uh, correct. Um, and I'm also on the, uh, at least the Winthrop numbers, I wasn't sure whether the vaccination data that we have also includes those preschool students who wouldn't have been eligible. I'm not sure. Do you know that, Hugh? I'm not I don't sure. Know. I'm not and, sure. And, 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 to, and uh, uh, the uh, daycare center here at the school we have to yeah. think about mm -hmm. as well. My wife works there. She'll keep wearing a mask because none of those kids are able to be vaccinated. Uh, so I support the change. I, I support updating the policy as Chubb suggested and uh, okay, move great. forward on the 28th. Mm -hmm. So, I wrote something up. I'm thrilled that we're finally at a point when we can consider removing the mask mandate from our schools. The past two years have been challenging for our students, staff, and community, and they have risen to those challenges. Sorry, I'm probably going to cry. <laughs> we knew it. I know. <laughs> we now see the Omicron cases falling rapidly and are encouraged and hopeful that better days are ahead. Ipswich has worked hard to keep our students, educators, and staff safe from in-school transmission of COVID-19 from the beginning. From providing PPE and now tests to our staff, to HEPA filters in every classroom, massive efforts to improve our HVAC systems in every building, tents for outdoor learning in warmer weather, and masking inside of the school buildings. Each piece of our mitigation strategy added a layer of security for the people inside of our schools. Our nursing staff have diligently contact traced every case of COVID-19 in our schools from the return to full in-person learning in September of 2020 through December of 2021 and the beginning of Omicron. And there had only been one known case of in-school transmission. Those mitigation strategies worked. This was not the case in other schools in the Commonwealth. While I desire, I understand the desire to get back to normal, in all of our lives, I do have some reservations about revoking the mask mandate at this time. The timing of February 28th, as other people have mentioned, dropping the mask mandate the day kids return to school after February break seems like it might not be the greatest idea. Families may have traveled, had exposures while doing so, and it would seem prudent to at least wait till March 7th, a week later, to drop the mandate. The American Academy of Pediatrics says it is too early to end masking in schools, lest anyone argue that they are conservative in their opinions around COVID-19. I would like to remind people that the American Academy of Pediatrics were advocating for a return to in-person learning in June of 2020, only four months into the pandemic. With the advent of Omicron and the spike in numbers, our school nurses have stopped contact tracing. 
If we continue with this policy, not doing contact tracing, we will not know if a rise in COVID-19 cases in our schools is due to in-school transmission and lack of masking, which may put our students and educators at greater risk. When you look at the case numbers in Massachusetts and Essex County, they're still very high. Over uh, 1,400 again today, I believe, um, in Massachusetts, not in Essex County. Any COVID-19 risk map you look at will show that we are either still high risk or very high risk, despite the fact that 88% of the population of Essex County has had at least one dose of COVID-19 vaccine. While I hope and expect that by the end of February, those numbers will be better, we just don't know yet. There's a new study out last week, which shows unsurprisingly due to the nature of this virus that uh, your immunity after the booster dose wanes after the four months following your booster dose and starts to drop as it has in the past, which is why we've never been able to develop a vaccine for the common cold. It's the same family, mutates rapidly, it's hard to vaccinate against. And I'm just wary of dropping it without making allowance for the fact that we do not know if or when there could be another wave. There may never be another wave. Working in a hospital, let me tell you, that is my fervent prayer. I don't ever want to go through this again. But we just don't know yet what will happen. I think it's unwise to allow, not to allow for that possibility. However, I agree with what other people have said, which is that the guidance from Desi and the commissioner has been good. And so, you know, I think we can probably go forward trusting them. And then I just want to say, as a nurse who's been working in a hospital setting throughout the pandemic, I can assure you there is nothing I would like more than a return to normal. I have taken care of many people with COVID-19 during the pandemic. I'm fully vaccinated and I wear a mask at all times at work. And I have not had, to my knowledge, contracted COVID-19 because masks work. And while the numbers at my hospital are encouraging, we don't know yet what the future is. I know we're all tired of the pandemic. But I just think we need to be patient with each other and work together towards a return to normal and be smart about it and take care of each other. And again, I'm sorry for crying. Thanks, Bob. Uh, and I, that said, I'll wait to hear what Hugh says, but I'm not at this point in favor of it, but I would be overruled anyway, so. So, uh, I'm not as, good, not as good at conveying emotion as Pav is. Um, so as a lot of you guys know probably, I'm a, I'm a physician and Pav is a nurse. Um, so I, I guess at this point, I'm just saying, I'd like to say that I'm, I'm, I'm thankful. I'm thankful we live in Massachusetts we have, where we have Governor Charlie <coughs> Baker a reliable DPH and a reliable DESE that have really given us solid guidance throughout and, and, and we think we've been well served by them. I'm thankful we're in a school district where we have a, a reasonable school committee who's looked at the data, listened to, the, listened to the professionals and worked really, really hard to get the kids in school, to get them quality education. I mean, how lucky are we that we invested so strongly in, in our education by computer so that we could have remote learning at a much higher level than other schools did. How lucky are we that we have an outstanding union that when we wanted to go back to school, they were like, absolutely, we're ready to go back to school. And uh, so many districts were behind on that decision-making process. We were always at the very front of that decision-making process to get our kids in school, to get them high quality learning, and to get them to where they needed to be. So I, I, I'm, I'm so happy that we have such a high quality district that from the administrators to the union, to the educators, to even our school committee, I, I feel like we've, we've navigated this as well as you could possibly navigate. Um, this last wave of COVID was real. I mean, we had mo way more admissions at Beverly Hospital, 50% plus more than it during any other wave. We had people, two, three people dying every day last month at the hospital. Uh, I've not done elective surgery that were for people who stayed in the hospital since mid-December. And we're just allowing inpatient surgery now because there are so many people in the hospital with COVID who are so sick and dying every day still. And so although people don't see it in their day-to-day -day lives at this point and they're ready to get rid of masks, it hasn't been time until recently. All the data I see in the last week or two, we've gone from 73 people in the hospital uh, three weeks ago to down to 16. Uh, the sewer data is way down. The uh, 
The data in our hospital for our employees contracting the disease is way down. And so I think we're seeing the time to take an off-ramp. I think the governors recognize that. And I think uh, it's about time for us to recognize it. My daughter is desperate to get her mask off. Uh, she's recognized the value of masks. She's recognized what, why, why we've done what we've done. But, you know, it, it, it's hard for a senior in high school to be wearing a mask every day to school. And I, I think we've done a wonderful job of allowing our kids to have a great high school experience in spite of masks. Uh, and we've done this, I think, and we've all thought, for the best of reasons, for caring for not ourselves, uh, but for those who are vulnerable. And I think we've done a good job of it, as good as we can do. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna support the decision to uh, off-ramp off, off ramp now, uh, make masks optional. And uh, I would also encourage us to continue to follow the data, to continue to listen to DESE and the DPH and the governor. And if there's a change in the situation, to change. And uh, to support both those educators and those parents who choose to send their kids to school with masks and in places where you can't have vaccination to encourage uh, kids and, and educators to continue to ask the blunt, the transmission, if it is occurring. Um, but realistically, um, our kids are ready and our community is ready and the numbers support it. And uh, I think that we're in an incredibly different position than we were at the end of Christmas break when there was a huge wave of COVID coming. It's by every measure dissipating. And so we, we should embrace it and, and jump on board with the governor. All right. Can I make a motion? Sure. I'd like to make a motion to uh, follow uh, DESE guidance and uh, lift the mask mandate on February 28th, as well as adopt the revised EBCFA policy with regards to face covering and uh, second, could you read EBCBA? Wait, please? can we? Wait. I will. Just, we have two things I think we're talking about. One is repealing our prior policy that dealt with masks. The second, which is a separate thing, is adopting a new yeah. policy. So we can just split those into two motions. Yeah, let's do the, the same let's do rescind well, I first. Wanna, I just, the reason I said it that way is because I didn't want to to drop the, drop the mask guidance without having the policy in place at the same time. So we can, so let's just get the first one because we, Emily and I talked about that a little bit today. There might be just some discussions around that new policy that we should okay. have. That's fine. Okay. All right, so, so I'll amend my motion to, uh, to follow. I, the motion is to follow DESE guidance to rescind the mask mandate as of February 28th. Second. Mm -hmm. Who Second, wants to second? I, my, I already seconded, but I, I I'll take that as a friendly event. Okay. Any more discussion? All in favor? Okay. Opposed? 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 Sorry, Bob. Okay, passes, <coughs> six to one. Yep. All right, um, so you wanna have a discussion now about the new policy? Could you read that policy that you, have, you guys have now? I'd be happy to read it. You so I think that, well, the gist of it is, I think one of the things that Emily was mentioned to me earlier, and, and I, I agree with her on is, two of the items there are basically, we, we have to submit to anyway. The busing thing, because it's yep. federally governed, and the, the masks in the health office because it's a Department of Public Health mandate anyway. So do we need a, a policy to include things that we have to follow anyway? Yeah, I don't, I think part of what we're in is are we adopting, why would we adopt, a, it's not our decision. It's not our decision to do masks on public transportation, which is a school bus right mm -hmm. now. That's a federal order that kids have to do it. And it's also the school nurses offices are fall under different guidelines because they're health care centers, so it's, it's DPH. And again, they haven't lifted the masking. So again, I don't know that we need a, like a, our policy is sort of redundant. a belt and suspenders a mm -hmm. little bit. The more, the third piece is the, is mandating the CDC recommendation that 
students who come back from testing positive wear masks for their last five days back from COVID. Correct. So that's mandating what's currently a recommendation. So I just, I think we need to be very clear on what it is we're talking about. So I, I, I don't, I guess. That's all. Okay. Um, I think it's important. Uh, we've been following the guidance of the Massachusetts Department of Public Health and, and DESE, which is Department of Elementary and Secondary Education, to get out of the acronym, frankly, uh, since this pandemic began. And this is an MASC policy uh, revision uh, that cites guidance statements from both of those sources. So that's why I think it's important that that, that be part of our policy as well. But we modify them all the time. We don't just blanket adopt them. And in fact, we wouldn't blanket adopt this one because it does need to be modified. If it were adopted, it still needs to be edited So, for this district. So. Well, I, I'm just reluctant to, I'm reluctant to, to veer from guidance. And I hear you do adopt, adopt, adopt policies all the time. Um, Traditionally, we start with the basis, an MASC basis. Yep, no, I so, so, so I think it's it's good that we have a foundational document here that you can't that the policy subcommittee can modify. Thank you. So, uh, do we have to create a policy if DPH or DESE have requirements, or even the federal government have requirements? Can we just no? So we right now, DPH covers the nurse's office. Right. DESE mm -hmm. covers the whole school district, and whatever guidance they have, we got to follow. And then the federal mandate on public transportation, which is the buses. So if they change their guidance, we don't have to necessarily meet and change our policy if we're just following their guidance. Mm -hmm. Do we even need a, a different policy? Here? Well, we we need to rescind the policy that we have that says yeah, we, that's just, what we, did. we just did. Yeah. So that's rescinded. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> the only thing I see in this new policy from MASC that's different is it says a face covering that covers the nose and mouth is strongly recommended to be worn by individuals who remain unvaccinated or are otherwise immunocompromised. And that, that, that's straight out of the DPH as well. If you read the new DPH guidance from today, the new DPH guidance says, in indoor locations, we, rec we recommend that unvaccinated individuals, immune compromised individuals, or, or people who live with people at risk or who are at risk themselves, for a viral infection, continue to wear masks. But everybody else can get rid of them in doing cases. That's what they, the DPH. Well, it's just a recommendation. That's, that's their recommendation. So, so I think the DPH recommendation it applies to all indoor spaces, and it would apply here as well. I just don't know why we, we would necessarily need a separate. Right. Uh, right. I mean, I guess we could put a, a policy in place that says we will follow uh, State Department of Public Health, State uh, Elementary and Secondary Education, and federal guidelines regarding masking. And that doesn't say anything. So it's not a policy we have to even put in place. Mm -hmm. And those will, those will change with time. So I, mean, I think at the very least, we just need, a, need more time for the policy subcommittee to look at this a little further. I don't think that it's something we should take a, we should move on tonight. But on February 28th, we're gonna have, we're gonna have to you know, decide to have no policy mm -hmm. or to right. adopt the policy. We don't have a meeting between now and then. Yeah, I so would, if we don't adopt something, we won't have a policy. I would like it's to fine. see the policy adopted and then refer to the policy subcommittee for change, just so we amendment. have a foundational backstop. This would be the first time that I believe, and I was trying to think back in history, that we, we voted to follow DESE's guidance, mm -hmm. uh, even though it was a mandate, um, two years ago when we put the masks on. So, so I'd, I'd like to see this policy as part, as part of tonight's discussion and votes. And then I'm happy to have it referred to policy subcommittee to take out the stuff that you don't think applies. Just oh, just an update from Jen Reed from uh, Cyberverse. As she said, uh, you guys probably got the same email, uh, or some of us do. Uh, she basically told us that the data we collected on, on uh, the elementary schools does not include preschoolers. Mm -hmm. And by definition, only those five plus are eligible for the vaccine, so the preschoolers, by and large, other than a few exceptional preschoolers who have uh, immune compromise, have not received vaccination. Okay, good to know. They're not counted in the numbers. Okay. I just had a question. Um, so 
We need to vote to rescind the current one. We just did. Right? We did, we did. So that's done. We did. Okay. So yeah. I wanted to okay. adopt, adopt. The discussion right. is Strike whether we should we adopt for the this policy. Okay. I just, I feel uncomfortable mandating a recommendation. I think what we're doing is shifting things to parents to decide for their kids, to staff members to decide for themselves. And I don't know, again, we haven't throughout this pandemic mandated recommendations. We've, we've been consistent with mandates as they come out, but mm -hmm. Ipswich as the school committee has not gone beyond that and this policy feels like it goes beyond what's recommended and becomes something different. I'm not sure if we haven't sort of, not actually officially as policy, but as um, in the past, it seems like and again, and I'm not sure if how involved we were in it or if it was more the uh, building heads and, and Brian, but like the policies previously about coming back from vacation, that if you, when you came back from vacation, if you had traveled, you were required to stay home for a certain number of days, that kind of thing, you know, I don't think we were, um, we did do. Was that do, policy or was that like that? No, I don't think that was policy. That, that was that. Brian and the, and the administrators, right, I think? Who were determining that? So wouldn't this sort of I be think the it same? was following again, I think it was following recommendations. It was Okay. I again I don't we weren't we never mandated right. C D C recommendations or DPH recommendations. So ugh, not sorry. Slow, yeah. Uh, yeah, but look, none of this changed anything. Why don't we just not have a policy? Yeah, so I, I agree have, with you. I don't think we need a yeah. policy. We have That's policies. Right. We don't need to be responsible for it. Right. The state's doing a good job, yep. and we have no cause for complaint. Mm -hmm. I mean, if the, if the question is, the without a policy, does it permit a, a mask option? Where yep. if you had a policy that just said individuals are not required to make use of it if they desire, but we were to remove the bolded additional provisions and the recommendation, yeah, then it, our policy is mask option. Which is what is we're that at. That's and I do not. I, I do not think that that's that's the intent, especially with uh, with the kids who are, are coming back from quarantine. When when it's, I I hear you on the strongly recommended language on this policy, and I know we've we've treated vaccinations that way. We've from the very beginning. It's not been a mandate. It's been a strong strong recommendation that people get vaccinated. So. I don't see the harm in in uh, in voting on this policy, and if there's redundancies in it uh, that that we're uh, affirming law, I don't see the harm in that either. Um, and that would be the masks in the health offices and the masks on the buses. So so I think it's important that that uh, we have. Is this in the uh, in the meeting? It is. Yeah, it is. Yeah, I'll share it with you right from, now. Updated from MASC underscore EBCFA. Oh, I mean, part of my concern I, is I one. That you, yeah. Oh, is I feel like it's. I don't want to say an overstep, but I feel like it's an overstep. And I'll tell you, I am hugely, again. I don't like the idea of someone comes back from being out and suddenly they have to be in a mask so everybody knows you had COVID. It makes me very uncomfortable. I don't think it's, again, if parents choose to do that, which I hope you do if you're concerned about spreading it or whatever, but um, I, there's something about that that really doesn't sit well that was with a, me. That was a reservation we had in the very beginning when uh, we asked them to put, that's one of the reasons that everybody was masked. Right, I didn't like the idea of yeah. picking. Right, oh, I understand. I just, I, I don't like that. it. Yeah, it, you know, it's, to your right. point, it's it's making it mandatory versus keeping it as a recommendation. Right. I and believe that's a DESE guidance, uh, so I'll look it up. But. Again, but I don't think it's, 
if it's, it's a difference between recommendation and it says must follow strict masking. Right. And and if it's mandated, right. it's mandated by Desi. I mean, that's a different thing, but I don't, I don't, right. I don't know. I just. Yeah, I mean, r literally you're summarizing Desi as far as I can read here, which is fine. Uh, are we required to follow Desi rules? Or Desi yeah, recommendations? I don't know. If it's a recommendation, probably not. Yeah, there's no, it's, it's a recommendation. It's not a, rule, it's not a it's mandate. A this policy mandates it. And right. that is a big distinction in my mind. Ten days. Policy meets on March eighth. Yeah. We have a meeting March tenth. I just think don't. there's a there's a, a hole there that 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 we have a responsibility right. to fill. But we have, I feel like we have public health. Yeah, I mean, but, I, I guess I guess what you're saying is there right now, children are mandated. All children are wearing, wearing masks. But there's going to be a time frame, February twenty eighth. A kid who just got COVID, who's completed their five days out of school will come back without a mask if they choose to or if their parents choose not to send mm -hmm. them a mask. And they'll be transmitting the virus. Or it might well be even more severe that a child has COVID and goes to school anyway because their parent chooses to send them without a mask. I don't know if we, we, we need to have those rules in place. It sounds like those are understood guidelines from the state and federal authorities, but not everyone follows guidelines. Right. So maybe Chubb's right that we do have to be explicit about what to do with kids who have COVID. Because we're still, we still have plenty of kids who have COVID right now. That's gonna go away though. But then I also feel like then they're sitting across from each other, yeah. masked down, eating yeah. lunch, like. Well, they do that now. Right, yeah. so I, I don't know, I just, I get it, I get it, I get it. I just, I don't know. So I'd like to make a motion that we, we adopt the modified EBCFA tonight. Um, and then uh, I know you have policy come, uh, so that's my motion. Okay. Uh, I'll support your motion uh, if policy addresses it uh, at the next policy meeting, understanding that this is an off ramping towards uh, what we're hopefully adopting state and, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, federal guidelines on and DPH guidelines on asking. Any other discussion? All in favor of Chubb's motion? Yeah, can you just clarify what you just put? I guess that, are you just presenting it to then consider it and vote on it another time? Or is yeah, this so, something that's been adopted? So the amended face covering policy, essentially the hang up that we seem to have is the requirement for kids that are out quarantining for five days are required to then come back to school and wear a mask for five days. Okay. The question is whether or not that's a mandate or whether it's a recommendation. So we're adopting it to then be able to explore it further and uh, potentially amend the policy when we have the time to meet as a subcommittee and discuss it. So nothing's been decided on this point. Just put it on the table. Well, the, that, that policy will be in place until we can, uh, we can explore it and potentially change it if we. So, so if your child has, has COVID for five days, they have to come back with a mask for five days. Yeah. Or stay out of school for 10 days. Yep. And those extra five days of staying home would be um, excused? Sure. Nope. I think we have an attendance policy that, that it's pretty uh, generous on COVID. It's been very generous. Second. Second. All in favor? All right. Thanks, everybody. Well, thanks. When's budget meeting? We have oh, to meet. Are we going to do that? For for ten minutes. Impact bargaining. Oh, wait. I can't hear this. Yep. I'll talk to Brian tomorrow when he's back. And Thank we you. will get back to you tomorrow afternoon. Thank you. Okay. Contract, guys. This is the month after we did.